Thank you so much for accepting to do this interview with us today, Sana. If you could kindly introduce yourself and uh, what you do. Well, uh, my name is Sana Mahmood. I'm originally from Pakistan. And currently I'm here at Ohio University, enrolled in a master's program. I'm doing my degree in international development with a focus on gender, sport, and development. Okay. I um, was at your presentation today. Could you kindly tell us what your presentation was about? Mm -hmm. Well, I decided to present some of the findings from my undergraduate research. I conducted research back in Pakistan while I was doing my bachelor's degree in development studies. Um, the research was on the impact of sports on the self-esteem of sports women in Pakistan. And, I, and the motivation for which I wanted to do this research came from my own personal experiences as a woman in Pakistan, also as a sportswoman in that context. So I may have not mentioned, but I was a professional athlete myself. I was involved um, in football and uh, basketball. I actually had the honor of captaining the women's football team twice for Pakistan. Wow. And when I say football, obviously I mean soccer. Soccer. <laughs> yes. Uh, so because I felt that sport played such a huge role in my life and in shaping the person that I am today, um, I felt that it was very important to explore that and see if it really had that effect on other women's lives. And that's basically what my research was about. So it's interesting because I spoke to all these women who were involved in semi-professional and professional sports um, and I re restricted it to football and basketball because those were the two um, that I was particularly interested in that I had played and it was easy for me to get a hold of the women in that uh, field. And I had in-depth interviews with them. I had qualitative and quantitative data but today I presented on my qualitative findings. It was very... Uh, very interesting because you go into research and you expect to find certain things, but then research also brings up a lot of other new themes that you're not expecting. So some of the things that they told me were obviously how sports had impacted their physical and mental well-being, you know, um, things that we, we always hear about sport, you know, the getting exercise done, being fit, remaining active, um, understanding the importance of being fit and active and exercising those kind of things. But besides that, because of the kind of uh, cultural context Pakistan is in and because of the kind of uh, religious uh, uh, sort of situation that these women grew up in or live in every day, sport plays a different role in their lives. So many of the, w w of the women are restricted just to the private sphere, just to their homes. They're only allowed to go to school and then come back. Or even if it's not about the permission from their parents, it's a cultural thing where they don't have anything else to do outside, they have responsibilities at home. So a lot of the women talked about being able to use sport as a way to come out of that private sphere into the public domain. Um, instead of school now, they were participating in sport and that gave them a few hours outside of their home to you know, interact with other women. And I think that's really important um, in, in women sort of identifying with each other, identifying with themselves. They need some space for them to talk to each other to discover themselves also. So that was one thing that also came up during the research. Um, along with the fact that many women talked about feeling included because a lot of them felt marginalized, not just being a woman in Pakistan, but because Pakistan is a country of you know diverse ethnicities. So if you are from a minority group, you might feel discriminated against or you might feel marginalized, but even those women from minority groups were able to participate in sports. Um, and while they're in that uh, team environment, nobody's thinking of their ethnicity or their background. Everybody's just thinking of her skill. You know, and that's very important for people because that's empowering. Um, you don't have to think about the color of your skin, the language you speak, but actually what position you can play on the team. Um, so it sort of gives you that sense of inclusion. At the same time, women talked about, um, you know, um, their bodies, how they how they never realized they could be so strong. A lot of women, like I said, if you're if you're wearing a so certain sort of dress, you're wearing certain types of shoes, you're wearing you always. Uh, put in a certain box where you're supposed to perform a, a typical gender role, then you won't step out of that box and you won't explore and then you won't even learn about what your strengths could be or what your true potential is. So many women identified that they realized they were stronger than they actually thought they were, their body was capable of something and then that led to an appreciation of their bodies, appreciation of their inner strength and physical strength, uh, both, both emotional and physical. 
Um, a lot of the women also talked about the economic empowerment uh, through sport and the opportunities that had opened for them. So many have gone on to pursue scholarships because of that. Um, you know, uh, pursue education on a scholarship, I should say, because they weren't even looking at education as something that they would pursue. Uh, a lot of them have um, moved on from playing to coaching now. So they've created sport programs in their communities or their schools, and they work as coaches, as personal trainers, um, as managers, and that's something that's you know just an additional thing, an additional income, um, and I think that really adds um, to to the sort of economic situation that we're facing in Pakistan. So um, that that creates sustenance for these women, and I wanted to all tie it together with you know concepts from feminism. Um, theoretically, if you talk about it, I wanted to connect my findings with concepts from feminism, concepts from development, and concepts from the sport and development approach. So basically, um, what I was able to conclude was that, um, you know, I'm, because I'm very interested in the personal development of people, um, how sport could play a role in helping uh, personally develop individuals in a society, in uh, enhancing their well-being, and how that, particularly for women, can lead to, you know, their empowerment. And I was able to find positive results but because, as I mentioned, there were interestingly other things that I was not prepared to find out about. Um, for instance, lesbianism. There's a lot of lesbians in sport. Um, and in a Muslim country like Pakistan, that's not something that is openly practiced or openly accepted even. So women, sports women, have been associated with being lesbians and that could have a negative impact on your um, on your self-esteem or your self-perception. So if everybody always hear, every time everybody hears you're playing a sport, they might associate you with something like that, that might have a negative impact and not be empowering. Um, there are other people who I feel mentioned that because they were in sport, they had to prove all the time what they're, what they're worth. So they have to become tomboyish or they always have to prove that they're better than the boys and that's an added pressure. But then at the same time, if they're doing that, they're also at a risk of losing their femininity. So they have to prove to the others that they are feminine enough. To the men, they have to prove their skill and their uh, talent and their manliness, so to speak, that comes with playing a sport like football. And at the same time, to the women, they have to still you know, play the role of the feminine and the female, and they have to stay too, true to that. So I think there's a, so much pressure that it could have a negative impact. And then with injuries and losses, and you know, sport comes with the good and the bad. There's a lot of negative aspects to it as well. I understood as a whole from their interviews was um, the woman, the women tried to take away the positive. They said the positive largely offset the negative. So, and their experiences were that everything comes with goods and bad, um, but the positive was much better than the negative. When you say sports in Pakistan, I know you talked about all the negative um, view of sports in terms of football, mm -hmm. but what is the context of sports for women then for, for Pakistan? If they're not playing, say, football, what sports would they be playing? So in general, um, like I said, I think it, it's to do with a more conservative mindset which says the less uh, physical movement um, and, and also something that is less, less physical contact. So if football is a you know, contact sport, um, for some reason, basketball is accepted more than football. So basketball, because I think it coming from netball, so netball is a sport for women in mm -hmm. Pakistan, and from that, basketball is. Um, table tennis, tennis, volleyball, and, and anything I think that requires them to not sort of collide with each other, that's what I think are sort of the feminine sports and all right to play. Because I remember when I was playing, I had a lot of questions from people asking me, so why do you play football? Why didn't you ever, you know, choose cricket or something? Um, because once again, cricket is, besides being such a, you know, important and enjoyed sport in our country, um, it also doesn't require you to collide with somebody. It requires your skill, it requires other things. Not that football doesn't require skill, but I think people tend to look at it as just a physical sport. So, in the context of Pakistan, I think anything where you're not physically hurting the feminine body, that's what would be said as an okay sport for women to play. And is this similar for all the regions in Pakistan, or is it just an urban-rural difference? Um, 
if you were further going to rural, I think they would even have reservations too as to why people, women even play sports. So I mean, what I'm talking about is the general uh, acceptance of women playing sport, and then you will always find a lot of um, a lot of groups that actually outright deny that women, Muslim women, should be playing sport at all. Um, this I this was new to me as well because when you see videos or postings or articles about sports women who've done well in Pakistan, you'll see a lot of comments under there saying things like um, Muslim women should not even be playing sport. This is wrong. This is illegal. They should be you know stay covered. They should not be allowed to run around and so and so dress, even though. Um, in Pakistan, everybody plays in a conservative dress. So if you're playing football, you're not playing in shorts. You're always playing in longer pants, and then your socks come knee high anyway. And you never have basketball, for instance. You're never playing in your jerseys, um, sleeveless jerseys. You always have shirts. Or if you are wearing a jersey, then you have a shirt underneath. So it's always very conservative. Yet there, you will find groups who even who even feel that a women should not be playing sports whatsoever. But generally, there are other groups who say if they do play sport, maybe they should choose the feminine sports. And I think slowly, because of urbanization, because of influence from the West also, and because of education, um, slowly it's changing, but I think it's, it's a change that's going to take time, where people are becoming accepting of football, women in football, women in basketball, women in contact sports. Mm -hmm. So would you say then the women, or say like the mothers, the sisters, would be more accepting of women playing sports? as opposed to men in general? Um, I think so. I think there are some, some gender norms that, that I think every society has uh, and adheres to. And at a subconscious level, even if we're not, even if we think we're not doing it, we tend to do it. Um, we tend to further propagate those gender norms. So if, if, a, if a mother has uh, two kids, a son and a daughter, her son will always be encouraged to do things like that, go outdoors, play outdoors. At a young age, he will be allowed to walk to the market alone. Whereas the woman, the girl, she will be um, bought, you know, the dolls. Even in the toys that they buy their kids, it's a difference. And she will always, at an early age, she will start getting herself involved in household chores. So it's the way they raise them as well. Whether they intend to or not, it really matters. Um, and I think, but like I said, because of education, because of ur urbanization, because of people's mindset slowly changing as well, that is changing too. Um, so now if um, somebody my age or somebody from my experience were to get married and have kids, um, maybe I would think about, you know, differently raising them. That probably has to do with my background or my education. And I know there's so many more like me um, who are starting to change these things. So it was a thing of the past, and it's also a thing of a different generation. It, it still exists, but in the rural areas, but in the urban cities, it's changing slowly. Okay. So bringing it back to this um, conference in sports in Africa and the Global South, mm -hmm. what's your, what do you think is the impact of you know, presenting mm -hmm. your research in such a conference? Sport for development has largely been um, involved with Africa for the past like many years, and just because I think there's a lot of work being done there, just because international organizations have always focused there, so our focus has always been there. But I always like to say, you know, there's a global south and there are certain characteristics that the global south has in common. There are certain things that I can relate to with people from African countries or from even Latin American countries or South Asian countries because we all share certain things of being underdeveloped economically and socially and politically or being in the stage of developing. So there are certain characteristics that we share because of which I think if you were to discuss sport in Africa, it is significant to discuss sport in Pakistan. Um, and throughout this conference I have been linking all the concepts that people have been talking about. You know, um, There was a gentleman who talked about the colonialization of media and sport in African countries. And he related it to how, because African players are playing in European leagues now, but and then because of that, the European media is dominating, or satellite TV is dominating the local media, and the local um, games are marginalized, or local teams are marginalized, and only the European leagues are now shown. And I went up to him and told him, well, you know, the same thing is happening in Pakistan, mm -hmm. but it's not because Pakistani players are playing in European leagues. You don't see Pakistani players playing soccer in European leagues, but it's still happening. We still have that colonization of um, the media and, and sport. So there are 
there is a significance to that and I think it's the significance of bringing the ideas of the Global South in there. So I think it's very relevant to, um, to present my paper here because I think there's a lot of commonalities that we can find um, that might bring us to common theories. Okay, so moving forward, what's next for you? Um, well, currently um, I'm in my first year master's program and so I have a year to go and I'm hoping, you know, like through conferences like these and meeting great people with great ideas and so intelligent and so helpful, I just get as much feedback as possible. Um, I want to work on more things, I want to write more articles and get something published hopefully. So from there, from, from this conference I guess, I want to take away uh, good ideas, good contacts, um, people, potential people that I could work with and just developing my next thesis, like what is exciting to me, what's interesting to me. I know it's going to be with sports. I just want to know what it's going to be about, whether I want to move away from women for a while and just look at sport for, for men or, or youth. Do I want to start looking at media? I think um, I've increasingly become interested in media because I feel like a lot is going on, but uh, particularly in Pakistan, for instance, people don't know about it. So once again, because of the colonization of the media, you're only broadcasting what's happening internationally and you're losing the flavor of your own Pakistani athletes. You're losing focusing on them and their stories. So I think that is what I want to maybe look at, start looking at the role of media and the role of role models, particularly for women. So people didn't even know we had a football team. You know, when they go to travel, People ask them, so are you the cricket team? Are you the hockey team? And then when they tell them they're a football team, they say, oh, we didn't even know we had a football team. I mean, I know it's new, but still there's such a lack of sort of knowledge about your local teams. You don't even know who's playing. Um, and I think it would help if you had positive role models in the media for other women to get involved. So that's an interest that's emerging. I don't know if I'll work on it, but that's something of interest right now. Well, Sama, thank you so much. We wish you all the best in your future research. Thank you for agreeing to do this interview with us. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay.